Hello there, this is DBT, and these are the Brunt. And alright, let's continue playing some more Asphalt 8, and today it's finally time to do a protest as promised of this beauty right here, the Devel 16 prototype. Oh, what a peculiar car this is. Now, if you watched yesterday's video where I talked a little bit about the um, health issues that I've had and whatnot, um, over there I explained that I was in a bit of a pickle where in the classic season I was only in what is basically the Silver League. I always forget what those leagues are called, but basically the Silver League, you know, the second to lowest league. But because I knew I wanted to make a video on this car, I just grinded it until I managed to get to Elite, where, where I am right now, and that allows me to finally get to test this car. So, I wasn't going to do it in Master Season because every time that I do a protest of a car, it has to be in Classic Season because that's where the most competitive players tend to be. So, let me select the car and talk a little bit about the stats. Because this is definitely a very peculiar car. Now, uh, by that I just mean basically the situation with the top speed because this is the, one of the few non-ultimate cars that have a top speed advantage. Now, by me saying top speed advantage, I don't mean that this car is objectively faster than any other car under regular circumstances. It's about as fast as all of them. But what I mean is that the top speed by itself, it's higher than cars that you would find normally in this bracket. And just to show what I'm talking about, you can see that the top speed, well, forgetting about the tuning kit, the top speed is 470, while the Nitro is 22.4. But if we look at another car of around the same rank at Pro, you can see that the top speed is considerably slower by like what? Uh, 30 kilometers an hour, uh, though the top speed, uh, excuse me, the Nitro is higher. So basically, when you add these two, end up being to what? Um, don't mind me, I just pulled out a calculator. It's at 492.3 kilometers when you add the top speed and the Nitro. Uh, and if you add the ones for the Devel 16, it's going to be basically the same. 470.2 plus 22.4, that gives you what? 492.6. So it's about the same speed. But why do I mention that this matters? Well, because this is a very unique situation where it allows certain cars to get an advantage, for example, if you're running out of nitro. We'll talk about more about that once we get into the races. For now, let's queue in and see what we find. Okay, we're starting with Sector 8. This is gonna get a little bit interesting. But yeah, overall, that higher top speed, um, for example, it benefits when you run out of nitro, or in some situation, it can also make, if your car drifts okay or goodish, it can make so that the drift itself, at least the start of the drift, is considerably faster than a car that its normal top speed, um, it's lower, because obviously the moment that you enter on drift, or rather, in general, in order to drift, you can, oh wow, <laughs> you cannot be using nitro, so anyway. I'm not skilled enough to tell you, oh yeah, this is an absolute objective advantage because of this, and ah, I don't know. So, what I can tell you about this car is that, if you if you notice, I crashed on a wheel a little bit earlier, and that is because the handling on this car is absolute garbage. I'm willing to say that this is probably the second worst... I'm fine, I'm fine. This is the second worst handling in uh, Class S. And I say the second worst because obviously the, the crown for the worst handling goes undoubtedly to the Dodge Tomahawk. And well, at least I didn't finish last, so that's something. Listen, listen. Technically, I might be last, but I wasn't because there was another player. He quit, but still, it counts. Or it doesn't count. Ah, whatever. But yeah, this handling is absolutely terrible. Um, the Dodge Tomahawk is the one that has the absolute worst, but the Devel 16 is pretty bad. Um, all right, so got the video by Travita, Penin, Farina, Batista, Cento, Diechi, but I did beat another Travita. So that's good, I suppose. And by the way, I should also give you a disclaimer that um, my level of playing right now is not at my usual level. That's not to say that my usual level is very high. But right now, because I'm still recovering from my health issues, I'm still a little bit like... I, I don't know, foggy, I don't know what it is, but I don't seem to react at the same speed that I normally do, so I, I'm not playing straight up Garbo, but I'll tell you that I can feel that I'm definitely not at my regular level. Now, that's not to say that I'm going to be playing much better once I fully recover, but hey, just uh, wanted to justify myself. But even then, I, I was about to say that this car is a little bit of a difficult car to deal with precisely because of the low handling. However, if you're used to using micro drift and punch drift, then this shouldn't be too much of a problem. This is definitely a car that you can um, control so long as you know how to do that or you're somewhat proficient in doing those those mechanics or those techni techniques. Um, 
but in general other than that this car is actually absolutely amazing the acceleration on this thing is ridiculous the nitro is amazing so what's not to like well the handling um all right got a second place uh defeated by a faraday but i did beat a cento dieci trevita reventon two more faradays speed tail and a racer tacon man the racer tacons are much more um off more common nowadays i think so the fact that the nitro on this car seems to be pretty good in ooh, look at that um uh, seems to be pretty good in general i think that makes it so that this car is one that you can more comfortably or maybe more liberally use triple tap nitro in order to make the most out of the acceleration you know that i'm a, a player that is very much about perfect nitro i tend to use perfect nitro all the time but um whenever possible i like to go with triple tap on this car simply because it doesn't completely sip away all of my nitro in a matter of two seconds so that's that's kind of dope that's what i'm saying that this car oh god <laughs> barely uh, see what i'm saying about the, the handling i was full steering in that one that i barely managed that anyway um <coughs> The, the, the triple tap along with the good acceleration of this car really can make it into a very competitive car. But again, you just got to be very cognizant of the fact that you're going to have to definitely put a lot of effort into controlling it. Because if you just want to steer it like it's a Faraday, a Centenario, or one of those good handling cars, you're going to have an absolute nightmare of the time. But all right, we got a first place defeating uh, Lycan Halloween Sports... La okay. Motors... The one of these, a <laughs> Batista and a Chiron 300 Plus. I was gonna say that I feel proud about beating the, the 300 Plus, but seeing that it was on last place, I imagine that he crashed or something. So I'm not sure that I can take much of a W or pride from that. And to my point of not playing at 100% of what I normally play, um, yeah, I just got a W, but that honestly was more of a lucky situation. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely still feeling, let's say under the weather, I'm still weak. Um, I'm still unable to look at the sunlight and whatnot, um, but overall I am definitely getting better. You can you can tell that my tone of voice is different now because now I'm able to talk more freely. My head is not pounding unless I do some some really um, considerable physical effort. <coughs> and coughing is still no 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 fun because any moment that I cough, uh, my head pounds. Oh jeez, it's got a little bit. Um, but yeah, overall, overall, it's it's been all right. Again, it's mostly the sun that I got to avoid, so I feel a little bit like a um, like like a vampire or something because I legit I'm running away from the sun now. Nowadays, or rather today, for example, I'm able to deal more with the ambient light of the daylight. But the first couple of days when I was in my in the worst state of this whole ordeal. Man, I was, I legit felt like a straight up Dracula or something. And I'll elaborate on that on the next race, but I got another W. Let's go, bye bye. And, all right, defeating a Konexa 1 1 Batista FXXK and another Batista. Hey, I'm getting lucky over here. Very nice. Very nice. Um, also, remember, all these races are sequential. That's why I always let you see the race counter so that you know that I'm not cherry picking in it. So, yeah, for the first couple of days when, when my um, health was at its worst um last week it was absolutely I, I i even talked to a friend of mine about it that i straight up felt like dracula or something because i was legit completely inactive during daytime completely inactive i was still awake and all of that but i i, I wasn't doing basically anything but the moment that the sun would go down is the moment i would get up and then look for some food and and whatnot it was it was really funny because i was literally waiting for the sunset so like okay is the sun down yet no nope. sun down yet no nope. the sun oh, okay it's down all right now i get to look for food now i get to because in general well obviously i have blind um blind or curtain curtain well i have curtains in my house and all of that there's still a pretty decent chunk of of sunlight that bleeds through especially around the kitchen area and all of that so yeah that that was impossible for me to deal when i was at my worst um so yeah it was it was honestly kind of funny that i was legit just waiting for it to get dark and it's like oh it's dark perfect now it's moment for me to get up and start looking at well you know doing things and eating and moving and maybe take a shower or whatever yeah it was it was kind of silly all right i got a second place this time defeated by the fxxk but i did beat at trevita uh faraday Re renault sport rso1 uh, on Boosted Faraday, connects a 1-1, Batista, and Speedtail. See, I'm telling you, the, the Bell 16, it's honestly such a powerful car, so long as you can deal with its BS, I suppose. 
and I have come in, cometh out to the menu because I want to change the color of the car. I didn't show you the color options, and that's what I'm about to do right now. So we got it in the default white, which actually I think looks really, really, really dope. Um, we also got it on dark green, blue, black, which honestly looks super boring to me, extremely, extremely boring, because there's absolutely no accents anywhere of any other tone. But anyway, um, we also have it in orange. It's a kind of like a dark burnt orange. I kind of like it. We also got it on red. We got it in a dual tone of some purplish tone with red. I don't know. And in yellow. Honestly, for this car, my favorite colors are definitely white, orange, and yellow. These are my favorite colors for the car. And obviously, my least favorite would be black. I mean, is, is that a surprise? Of course not. All right. And by the way, there's the race counter. So let's keep going. And as I mentioned in yesterday's video and probably in another video, I think that I, at some point I talked about this car before. Um, that this car is normally a car <coughs> that sells for token. And by the way, excuse me for the coffee, guys. It's still happening and it will continue to happen. Um, but yeah, this is a car that normally sells only for tokens. I don't know. I think I snatched it at some rare situation uh, opportunity when it was for fusion coins or I don't even remember how I got it, but oh well, whatever. The point is that in general, it is a bit of a rare car. So, oh God, well, I had to mess up at some point. I told you, I told you, and I'm going to blame it on me being sick. That's not skill issue. That is, oh Jesus, uh, sick, sickness. Yeah, I'm going to go. Um, so yeah, definitely a rare car, but I always like this car because look at that ginormous wing. It's absolutely bonkers. It's ridiculous. In general, the car um, does have that very racing hypercar prototype feeling to it you know with basically a cockpit very low big wing and all of that this doesn't have a proper fin i mean it does have a bit of a fin in the middle of the of the wing but it doesn't have the the, the fin that connects the cockpit all the way to here but either way this car still looks absolutely bonkers that wing is massive i really like the way this car looks and everybody beat me because i made a bit of a noobs it's all right it happens it's all right and speaking of the looks of the car, if you want to get hard in a pin, you need to leave me the key phrase. And that for today is going to be, the Devel 16 looks better as a prototype than the production version. First person to post it gets the heart, the pin, you know how this whole thing works. But yeah, I bring that up because not too long ago, I made a video, link should be appearing in the top right, if I remember to do so, um, or at the very end of the video, show up. Um, I posted a video where I compared the Devel 16 between Asphalt 8 and Asphalt 9 because the car was recently added in Asphalt 9. But the difference is that the Devel 16 that we have over here <coughs> in Asphalt 8 is a prototype version, while the the one in Asphalt 9 is the quote-unquote production version. Now, I say quote-unquote production version because I think like only one has been made so far, and it's not even the... the w16 engine that it was promised to be or v16 i don't know what it was supposed to be um instead it's a v8 or w8 or whatever oh come on fine i hate those those knockdowns that make absolutely no sense but anyway um so yeah calling that a production version of the car it's a bit of a stretch but still it's the more modern version of the car and it looks more sleek and all of that in my opinion it looks more boring and moreover it doesn't have this ginormous wing so it looks boring to me, honestly. It looks a bit too smooth, a bit too soapy looking, if you know what I mean. But all right, bar of soap, I guess. Um, I got defeated by, I believe, Robinson Ultima. Uh, this, this, I'm, I'm, I'm giving up on trying to pronounce this. <laughs> um, on B Batista, Faraday, Arash on Booster, but I did beat a, a, a Speed Tail and a Faraday on Booster. I mean, to be fair, I was going to get a better result on the moment i got knocked down for absolutely no reason that made no sense game what the f i'm fine i'm fine but yeah i guess just to give you some closing thoughts on this car in general in case you want to go for it because of the sale and whatnot like i mentioned yesterday the sale is exclusive to to premium players it's not a sale friendly to free to play players so i know that a lot of you are not going to be able to get this car but if you're a pay to win player and you're thinking about getting this car because, I don't know, if you've seen it from afar, you've always thought, oh, I should get it. It's a, probably a great car, or whatever it is that you're thinking about. It. I just wanted to make a video to kind of give you an idea of what is the situation with this vehicle. Because honestly, like I said, it is a fantastic car so long as you're able to deal with the horrendous, horrendous handling. And if you've driven, again, the Dodge Tomahawk, you know what the worst handling is. It, this is obviously not as bad 
but amongst any other card in this game, this definitely takes the cake for being absolutely horrendous. In fact, I before I started recording this video, I tested in Gauntlet. I did a lineup of five bad handling cars. Four of them were Bugatti. Surprise, surprise. But, oh, Jesus. I'm fine. Um, that was really more my mistake than anything. It's, um, so I did a test in, in Gauntlet where I was driving this, the Cento Dieci, the Devo, the 300 Plus, even the regular Chiron. And yeah, now this feels way, way worse than any of those cars. So that should give you an idea of how bad the handling of this thing is. But it is not um, impossible to deal with because while it doesn't drift amazing, it doesn't drift terrible either. Okay. Oh, look at that. Three of those cars that I've given up on pronouncing. And I did beat an unboosted Arash. Why did I have to crash? Unless I was going to get a better result. Then. I'm ashamed of myself. So, in a few words, would I recommend for you to get this car only for collection value? Don't expect good performance from this um, in terms of, oh, is it a king? Is it going to is it gonna beat the, whatever is the current meta? I don't know, a fair day or anything. I mean, under the right hands and with enough practice, for sure. But that's, I think, just the case with just about any car. So, it's all right. Um, but yeah, other than that, I, I, I did want to maybe make this video as a bit of a PSA, like, hey, be aware that this car is not an easy, oh, I'm sorry, buddy, it's not an easy car for you to drive, so if you really want to go for it, um, just be prepared to deal with this super low handling, but again, it's not impossible to deal with, uh, put a little bit of practice on it, and you'll be alright, you can see that. Um, I am doing okay, and that is even though uh, you know that I'm a mid player. So it's just a matter of getting used to the car, getting used to how it feels. And once you do that, once you get to drive again a, a Bugatti, you're going to be like, wow, this drives surprisingly well compared to the to that Devel. But yeah, just wanted to give you that bit of information. Now, if you're curious to see how this car drives, later in Asphalt 9, I should say, later in the week, I will post a video of me driving this car in Asphalt 9 so you see it. But if you're really curious about seeing it at all, um, check this video showing up on the screen where I tested it, you know, between Asphalt 8 and Asphalt 9. It's kind of fun. And this other video, I don't know what it is. But that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the well wishes for my health. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody, and stay safe. Bye-bye. Mm,